What is going on, everybody? I hope everybody is having themselves. <coughs> I hope everybody's having themselves a really, really great day. Today we have ourselves a nice little video. I was just thinking about a few things that I use to cut corners or make life more efficient for myself when I'm working on anything that has to do with content creating. So I just thought I'd share those tips with you guys today and maybe it'll help somebody out. Give me everything, yeah. I need, uh, I need everything, I need. Right now I'm going to grab my DJI Osmo Pocket so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about and we'll go from there. So the first one we have here is a wireless boom mic on a boom arm and what makes this so special is you have it on wheels. So wherever you want to go in the studio you can wheel it around. It's heavy duty, it doesn't at all feel like it's going to tip over. You have your counterweight on the back here. So I simply just have a Rode Wireless Go to the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. We have no wire running here so you're not married to your position. You don't have to move a bunch of things around whenever it's time to switch position. Now again the thing that I really love about this setup is if you have a studio set up and you might have different areas set up to where you can film in we right now we've only been seeing kind of this angle i'm still like slowly working on the studio and really the studio is going to be used for days like today where it's absolutely pouring outside i mean it's like a hurricane out there right now and mainly the winter time because where i live winters are pretty damn bad and i ain't gonna go be doing no more no more Tem old Tem is past doing them freaking camera reviews in the middle of a snowstorm with mittens on freezing my nuts off that ain't happening no more, so we put the studio together for that reason, and that reason pretty much only. Also to get some work done all by myself and be peaceful, so. So the thing with a studio room is, is you have four walls. You also have four corners, so you could shoot from the walls, or you could shoot caddy corner, and you have different angles all in the same room. Don't be afraid to utilize different angles when you're shooting in one room. You could put a chair somewhere, you could stand up in one section, then you can cut to another scene, sit down, you know, load a tripod, direct your lights in a different way. And with a wireless boom mic set up like this, that's on wheels, you could roll it around the entire setup and it's hassle free. There's nothing else extra to move with it. You just keep, you can keep their camera recording. I could just move this wherever the hell I want right now. I don't have any Rode Wireless Go connected to me. It's up here. So yeah, that's the benefits of it. And you could have the microphone just out of frame like I have it now. That is where the microphone, you see this little gray grayness right here? And then we're just gonna move it. Yeah. Everything works perfectly and it's so easy to set up. Now, while we're on audio, let's go into the next one. And as you can see right here, I do have acoustic panels in the studio and I have them up there in the corner. I also have them running down the wall across the top and there in that corner and that corner and we're doing pretty good but let's just say you don't want to go to serious well this is a microphone acoustic shield to block out exactly what we're trying to block out with the rest of this stuff and these things are pretty affordable now when i got this back in the day years ago this was a lot more expensive than they're going for now again i will link the best deal on amazon in the description below typically if you don't have your microphone set up like this and you just have it on a hot shoot then you have this foam surrounding it so it's going to stop any acoustic noise coming from the sides or behind the microphone bouncing back into that microphone so the way you hook this up is extremely simple it takes like 60 seconds you just screw off whatever ball head top mount you have on your tripod or whatever you're gonna use. And then you just slide this bracket in, which is connected to the microphone shield. And then you just screw this right back on over top of it and it locks it in there nice and secure. And then you have your microphone fully soundproof pretty much. And you're gonna see a significant difference in the amount of acoustic noise that bounces back into your audio after picking one of these up. So what I wanna show you guys right now is some quick cuts. Anybody that does any type of video editing, and you might already know about this you might already apply this but this is for those of you that don't when you're doing video editing you want to speed up the process as fast as humanly possible everybody that's ever edited a video in the history of video editing knows that this is the case you, you want to get to the end of the video editing so you can get the product out to YouTube to a client to whoever so with this technique once you get it down and get used to it and kind of it's almost like learning a video game a couple hours of doing it and you're good to go this will speed up your work workflow immensely so on resolve 16 as you can see here we have a new cut page which i didn't like at first but i have grown to love it 
And I'm actually going to turn the volume off for this one. We have an old clip of me about, I'd say, 12 pounds skinnier and about 3 pounds less hair on the head. I had it short back then. I kind of like it long how it is now. What do you guys think? So we're going to turn the volume off for this. No need to listen to it because we're going to edit without any volume. When I edit, usually when I edit and I cut clips, especially if it's something like a YouTube video where I'm talking or the subject is talking, I like to just look at the waveforms, the audio waveforms, like you see right here. You see in the bottom right here. So everything in between that doesn't have any strong audio waveforms, we're going to cut out. But you can do it in a speedy fashion. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag our playhead right here to the beginning and in between each silent moment we're going to cut it out but we're going to do it as it plays now you might make a mistake but go back and fix it later just keep keep cutting the whole way through don't go back and play even keep in the takes where you might have had to do it three times worry about that later right now we're just trimming all the silent parts out there's actually a setting in davinci resolve to have your keyboard shortcuts switched over from whatever platform you are used to so I have mine set up like Final Cut Pro because that's what I learned on. And the keyboard shortcut on a Mac for cutting is Command B. So I'm just going to hold the Command button down. I'm going to press play. And whenever I see blank spots, I'm going to hit B and add a cut. And it's as simple as that. And then what you do is you can go back and you can just highlight, you hold command down again and then click on every single section that you plan on deleting that has no audio at all. And then once everything is highlighted, watch, I'll show you just like this. You hold down the command key and then with the mouse, we're going to hover over every single blank section that we know we're going to cut out. So boom, slide over. This is a keeper. Boom, slide over. This is a keeper. You can see the audio waveforms here. Boom. And as you can see, because I'm holding command down, all those separate boxes are separately selected. And we simply hit delete. And then boom, we have all our cuts made. Now, we're not saying we're gonna keep all these cuts, but then you can go through them one by one. You might have stuttered or loud noise in the background and you had to retake the clip or re-say over what you were saying. And then you just go through it. And if your cuts are not close enough to the end of the vocal and there's still too much space, you just grab and drag and just tidy it up. And look how fast that went. I mean, we, we literally just did a quick cut sequence and then you play the whole strip back and wherever you screw up, you just delete that part too. When I tell you that this saves, depending on how long it takes you to edit video, this saves so much time. On a project that would normally take me like four hours, I'd say this would knock it down to about two and a half, three hours. Really one of the main pieces of advice while you're doing this is fight the urge to stop and play back or to undo. Just keep chopping. As long as you didn't cut somewhere into one of the waveforms, just follow your path, make it through to the end of the clip, then go back and tidy everything up. So another technique that I don't have to use that often because I like to be pretty prepared in my shoots and you know what I'm gonna edit and how things are gonna lay out. But I have had to use this probably about two or three times and you might find yourself needing to use it. You can make your footage a flat profile. You could first go in, don't do any type of color correction and just simply turn down the contrast and turn down the saturation. And look at that, we have a flat profile. Let's say you're filming on your DJI Osmo Pocket, right? And then some of the other footage happens to be on your Sony, right? And let's say you happen to film accidentally a flat profile on one and not a flat profile on the other. Let's say that you filmed in the standard color science for the Osmo Pocket, but you filmed on Cine 4 on the other. What you could do is you could put both clips in your timeline. So instead of maybe tweaking your white balance first or your exposure, Go in there and try to match up the non-flat look 
with the flat look first and make it all flat, especially if you use a LUT. I've actually had a situation like this. I don't recommend it with log footage. I recommend it more with a flat profile. Long time ago, I filmed an S-Log 2 on my Sony camera, and then I just filmed in a normal color science. I think it was on the Osmo Pocket. And instead of trying to grade all the S-Log 2 clips to match the DJI Osmo Pocket, what I did was I just took the few clips that I had from the Osmo Pocket and I kind of flattened them out and I pretty much matched up shots with the Sony and then I jacked up the saturation on both clips and I just made sure the white balance was good and then I put the saturation back down where it was before that and then maybe I'll throw a LUT over everything and surprisingly it actually looked pretty similar. The colors looked really, really similar and it does kind of work. It's not the most professional or efficient way to do things but it does help in a jam and finally we are not going to leave out our final cut pro users here because i do have love for final cut and i do catch myself using it on occasion like when i shoot real estate properties and stuff like that i much rather prefer final cut for some reason just my work flows a lot faster and uh for vlogs and videos and youtube and stuff for the most part i'm using davinci but let's show a little love to final cut and you could also do this in davinci resolve a different way and you could just youtube it it's a little Really like a 30 second process it's something to click in files but you can make your own LUT is what I'm getting at here you can make your own LUT this will mostly come in handy in a controlled lighting situation maybe your studio or your house where you know you're going to be filming often this is kind of a good little technique to use you will have to buy a plug-in it is called color finale pro you probably heard of it by now if you haven't for final cut it is hands down the best color grading option that you have so let's just import a random clip here all right so that looks good we'll just shorten up this clip because we don't need the rest of it we're just doing a simple color grade here all right so let's say this is the clip you want to color grade you're going to go down to color finale you're going to drag it in and let's just do a really quick correction because the correction is not the whole point of this it's the exporting LUT and I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is right now so we'll open our controls and we'll do a little exposure correction very simple that's too dark we'll jack up the mid-tones a little bit and we'll add a little saturation and just for the hell of it we'll go into our blues and we'll change the hue of the blue a little bit we'll get a little more teal look we'll boost up the saturation on that teal look i like that you see that little orange green it brings out the clouds a little more it's a nice complementary color to the orangey skin tones so I like the way that looks and let's just say we're fine with that and we'll do we'll do a little That's fine. Let, let's just say that that's the look you want to go for, right? Now, once you have the color grade on the clip that you want, or let's say you have an adjustment layer over top your clips, you're going to simply go right here to this little wheel and export as LUT. You're going to choose where to save it. Right now, I'll save it to the desktop. So now what we'll do is we'll make a duplicate of this clip. We'll drag it right next to it. And then we will delete Color Finale Pro on one of those and leave it on the other and as you can see here we have our teal graded clip and then when we move here it's ungraded blue background teal background so now that we added color finale pro to the ungraded clip and we will add our LUT selection here and we will choose the folder we will choose desktop and there you see our test LUT ready It's literally as easy as that. If you already use any of these techniques at all, or if you have any other techniques to make your workflow a little faster, a little more efficient, a little easier, a little less cumbersome, please join the conversation below and tell us all about them. I always love to hear tips and tricks when it comes to improving your workflow. And I'm sure everybody else does too. There's the Instagram. Make sure you follow it. I'm posting there every day. If you like this video, please throw your boy a thumbs up. And if you are not yet subscribed, make sure you do that now. I'd appreciate it highly. I hope this video helps somebody out there. I hope it helps speed up somebody's workflow. And I'm going to go and speed up my own workflow now. I got some stuff to do. I will see you guys next time. Enjoy your day. Thank you for watching. Salute. Resume is a heavy weight. Yeah, put it on my back. Give me everything, yeah I need, uh, I need everything
everything I need, I love everything, yeah.